this is something new for me getting the battery back that I repaired previously so apparently this worked three or four times then stopped working as these things tend to do so we'll have a look not only at the battery the whole e-bike so what's the problem here let's have a look at the gauge Nada. Hmm. Let's look for some voltages. It's probably going to be the same. Show nothing on the gauge. I think I fixed this gauge before. Maybe it's defixed itself. Let's try charge. Let's see what the charger does. Very odd behaviour. The voltage is actually going down. Let me try another meter. What does that say? 23.35. Ah, hold on. See that turn green in the meantime? Yep. Yeah. Okay, we have a problem, Houston. Cell problem or BMS problem? Take your pick. I'm going to check the voltages on the balance connector. So disconnected from the board using a cheap light pot tester. I've had one person come in saying that these are. Shall we say, not much good, but this one seems to be fine, and as, as a comparator, it does the job. Where's negative? There's lots of different colours here. This one shows five cells, that's not good. Someone missing there. No, there isn't. So I'm only getting five cells when I should have six. Let's check it from the top down. I was getting six. Ah, ah. Was it the last one that's dead? Four, number five. Not, not one. I'll just show where the wires go. See so between red and orange. Orange one goes into there somewhere, and it's that thin red one there, which also goes under there. I think it's one of these groups that has the low voltage. Let's see if I can check. It's not good stance. Okay, so the far one seems to be okay. That bank of four. This bank of four on the side is it's dead, Jim. It's pretty strange how they've done this. See, you've got your copper strips, and there's a strip of nickel underneath it, which is welded directly onto probably more nickel strips underneath that. Let's see what kind of cells they've been using. as well. What 
kind of monstrosity is this? Is that two cells in parallel, is it? No maker's name. Never seen one like that before. There's no way of dismantling this without totally destroying it. <laughs> destroying it, drop it. <laughs> Built in and that top is hard, it's like it's moulded in or something like that. So what I'll do, I shall give the customer, or Pete, a ring and advise him. And I'll ask him how he wants me to proceed. While I've got it apart, it's worth taking a few minutes to check on the individual connections on these. Because on the original I had to redo that one, solder it on. Because the customer was complaining about it cutting out uh, over rough ground. Gently trying to lift them off, see if there's anything obvious there. Without being too destructive in my testing. Now that side seems okay. Let's do the other side. I must have checked over this side before because this is my tape going over the negative end been trying to take these copper strips apart so it's strip on strip and that's welded really well <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to do that without destroying them so I'll probably just have to solder those up together onto the new cells I had to go ahead from the customer to replace um, the dodgy four cells in this so the options were to either replace those or to replace the whole pack. They've gone with replacing four. This is what I plan to do. For There's a reason for this. Put them in holders like that instead of making four and just gluing them together. The reason being is that this group of four is now going to be the strongest link in this pack. These are LG cells, HE2, I think they're about 20 amp each. In all likelihood these are probably low discharge cells, something like 5 amp per cell. So if, or not if, when the time comes that another of these fails, I would say it's game over for the original cells. So I can just add on to this new bit, if and when the time comes, I can just replace all of that and keep that one. Before I proceed with my brilliant plan, let's just make sure it fits first, eh? It should do, it's only very slightly taller than the original. I'm on the wrong side to film that. Hard luck. You can see it slides in. Take it out before you short anything out. Ah, it's stuck. Yep, yeah, it fits. I welded up the new part of the pack of the replacements. Yes, that's solid. And before I assemble the new group to the pack, because these are at different voltages, that's 3.4, that's probably about 4.1. I'll have to charge this pack up separately to bring it up to the same voltage as the rest of them. All these are it's about 4.1. Let's have a look at the cells. 1.6 and 
Tafsir Allah This is a six cell tester I'm trying to test a seven cell pack So I'll have to move it up one That's all I'm interested in It's going to be number six on this one Five's one I replaced. Number six, four point one five. That's all within about point zero five volt. I think that's good enough. Let's put some tape on this. Oh yeah, I've, I had to solder that back on because I, because this copper strip I can't or I don't have the power available to weld it. I think that's reassembled the right way. So many wires. This BMS has to be at a jaunty angle like that because it won't lie flat as per last time. I just need to connect up the balance plug up to the BMS and see if it accepts the charge first. Just checking on the output connector 28.7 volts and charging. Charger has full. 29.2 volts. Let's try and do a discharge test through the BMS. Usual setup voltage and current. 8 amps. Ah, that's okay. That's been about 15 minutes on. 8 amps more or less. Yep, that's a pass. And before I put all this back together, I've got an additional test to do. It's because these originals went down to zero volts. I was sort of worried that the BMS might be draining it down. So where these were connected to the balance wires on the BMS. I've just got my pin probes in there. So I've got 3.9 volt there now between the orange and the red balance wires. Let me stay still. And those are the two that are about in the new pack. So I'm going to leave that for about 24 hours and see if the voltage drops and whether this BMS is draining that group of cells. This has been standing for about a week now. I'm just going to check on the balance voltages on the BMS. No, you're not. No, you're not too. Try again. 3.9. It's not making any good contact, but it's 3.9. Come on, get in there. No, you're not. There's a bit of goop. On the plug stops me making proper contact. <laughs> Too close. There you go, three point eight eight. That's the new uh, group I did. Last one, nine. I'm fairly happy that the BMS is not draining the battery, so let's put that back together. That's it back together. I seem to have lost an LED. I'm sure this one wasn't lighting previously, now one of the other sides isn't either. Let's check 
and I'll put voltage. Seven and a half. That's after a discharge, of course. Oh, let me try charging it. Just trap up in the charger end. Yeah, charging and voltage gone up. That's a good way to show if it's charging. Let's put a voltmeter across it and then hook the charger up and see the voltage increases a little. For now, I think it's charging, it's not quite full. Let's give it a test. So it's a road test. This seems to be a pedal assist, it only goes when. You're actually pedalling. Plugs. Effort and it's down to piss down with rain, Jane. It's a motor cut off now when you stop pedalling. quarter mile jaunt in the rain oh the LEDs come back to life uh, still showing full and that's it for this battery second time around after that little jaunt in the rain now that can go back to Pete and Jane. If that was useful or not, just leave me a thumbs down, thumbs up, leave me a comment. And of course, a kebab. <laughs>